Good morning and welcome to the next Capri training session. In this session, we will cover the uh, basic GAMS features that are frequently used in the Capri model. My name is David Stepanian. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute of Farm Economics. In this session, we will cover the following topics. Sets and mappings, conditionals, display options, comments, dumps functions, control variables, conditional compilation, model attributes and options, and partial one. Let's start with sets and mappings. We already know that sets are fundamental building blocks in any GAMS model. It is, but it is also often necessary to define sets whose member uh, members. Uh, are also members of some other larger set. Those sets are known as subsets, and the larger, the original sets, are referred to as supersets. For example, let's look at this example. If we have a set called crops, uh, which includes uh, seven different crops, we, we want to define, define the subset, which includes only the cereals from this group of crops. For doing so, we use the same syntax as for defining normal sets, but in this case, uh, uh, after the, uh, the assignment of the name to the set in the parentheses, we also include the name of the original set and uh, list uh, only the sets we want to include in this subset. Please note that all the uh, elements of the subset must also be listed as set elements for the original superset. Sometimes it is necessary to have more than one name for the same set. A second or third name might be assi may be assigned uh, to the same set using the alias statement. The syntax for uh, assigning uh, more names to the same set is as follows. We use the GAMS keyword alias, open the parentheses, include the name of, already declare, of an already declared set, comma, and assign a new name. With commas, you can assign as many names as you want. For example, if we have a set C for commodities, with the alias statement, we can assign a second name to this set C, which is CC. And we can refer that to this set for the code either using the set C or CC. It, you know, both uh, sets will contain the same set elements. The sets that we have discussed in detail during the tutorial sessions have their elements stated at compile time and during the execution time, the membership is never changed. Therefore, they are called static, static sets. In contrast, the elements of dynamic sets are not fixed, but may be added and removed during execution of the program. And dynamic sets may be assigned to using two different GAMS keywords, yes and no. Like any other set, dynam a dynamic set has to de uh, be declared first uh, before it can be used in the model. For example, if we have a set called Y, uh, ranging from 2010 to 2020, which is a static set, we can also define a dynamic subset or car Y, which stands for the current year, and uh, assign the uh, set element uh, 2010 to this uh, dynamic, dynamic set using the GAMS keyword yes. Please note that dynamic sets cannot be used as domains. However, the trick is to declare the equation over the entire domain, but define, uh, define it over the dynamic sets. We will see an example in a few slides. In a few slides, ORD and CARD operators are GAMS functions that allow uh, knowledge of the relative position of a set element within the set. The, or, the operator ORD returns the relative position of a member uh, a member in a set, and the operator CARD returns the number of elements in the set. 
Please note that for using these operators, uh, your set elements need to be ordered. However, you can relax this uh, requirement using the dollar control uh, option of order. Let's look at an example. So again, we have the set Y for the years 2011 to 2020. And uh, we create, we declare two, two parameters, P underscore or and P underscore card to see how the ORD and card operators function. To the P underscore ORD, we assign, uh, we, uh, we assign the ORD operator of the Y set, which means for each set element, a value uh, indicating its relative position in the set will be assigned. That is for 2011, the value one will be assigned for 2020. 2014, 3, and so on. In the case of the card operator, uh, the number of total elements in the set will be assigned to P underscore card, which is 10 in this case. Lead and lag operators are used to relate the current member of an order set to the previous one or to the next set element. Note, however, that if lead and lag operators are used with an unordered set, the program will terminate with an error message. Let's consider the following problem. Again, we have set Y defining the years, and we have two parameters, the population size for each year, uh, which is pop over the set Y. And we have assigned uh, the uh, population value for 2011 equal to 100. We also have annual growth rate of the population size, which is equal to 2%. Now to calculate the uh, population uh, uh, population size uh, for each year, we can either define uh, define it per, uh, for each year individually, or we can use the, the loop operator and use the lead and la lead and leg operators to define it using only uh, one line of code, which can be done as follows. So with the loop, we are, which we run over the set Y. And we define the following the assignment, which says that the population size in the next year is equal to the population size of this year times one plus the growth rate. Note that the parameter prop is declared over the set y, but it is defined over the domain y plus one. Therefore, the first definition will be generated for the pop parameter with the set 2012, set element 2012. It is often necessary to provide mappings between elements of different sets. For this purpose, GAMS allows the use of multidimensional sets, also known as tuples. Let's consider the following example. We have two different sets, C for crops, and T for management techniques. Uh, yeah, for example, irrigated, uh, if you have an irrigated management technique, rain fed, mechanized rain fed. Uh, and we define a new multidimensional set called CT, uh, which includes the set members of the set C and set T and represents the feasible combinations of the crops with the management techniques. Now, we, in this set, we want to define uh, what are the, uh, 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 the feasible combinations of the uh, management techniques with the crops that we can grow. And these definitions can be either done using this dot between the individual set elements. So we can define these uh, combinations one by one using the dot. Or an even easier way is to use the GAMS keywords yes and no that we have already learned for such assignments. So in the second example, 
Now, as we can see, we have another multi-dimensional set uh, called CT1. And in this case, uh, with the yes and no statements, we assign first that all the possible combinations between C and T are feasible. However, we overwrite this result using the no statements and uh, saying that the combination of maize and T0 management technique and the combinations of tomato and T0 uh, 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 management technique are not feasible. And if we run both those codes, in the end, the results for the uh, uh, multi-dimensional sets CT and CT1 will be the same. However, in the second case, we save several lines of code. Conditions. We can also use the subsets that we have already talked about to define parameters, variables, or equations only for the select selected set elements. For example, if we have a set C for the crops, we can define a new set for the cereals and only include the cereals in this subset. And uh, we can define a parameter SP for the subsidy of these cereals. Note that we are defining, declaring uh, the uh, parameter SP over the set C. However, defining it over the subset. Meaning for only for cereals, we assign a subsidy of 150 euros per ton, for example. The dollar operator is one of the most powerful features in GAMS. It is used in conditional assignments, expressions, and equations. The general syntax is as follows. First, we if, uh, include, define the term, include the, define the term, dollar sign, the logical condition, and comes the logical condition. For example, for the, for the following logical condition, uh, if x is greater than three, then y equals to two. Uh, this logical condition can be modeled in GAMS as follows. So first comes the term, which is the y, the dollar sign, the logical condition that x is greater than three equals to two, which can be read as y such as x is greater than three equals to two. The effect of the dollar condition is significantly different depending on which side of the assignment it is located. If the dollar condition is on the left side of the assignment, an assignment is made only in case the logical condition is satisfied. If the dollar condition is on the right-hand side of an assignment, an assignment will always be made in the case that, uh, when the logical condition is not satisfied, the value zero will be assigned. Let's look at some examples. In the first example, we have the dollar, uh, dollar operator on the left-hand side. This means that the value 50 will be assigned to the parameter of P underscore left only for the set element, uh, which is on the first position. That is uh, for A1. In the second case, uh, uh, we, uh, an assignment will all, uh, always be made for p underscore right parameter. However, in the case for the, uh, of the first set element, the assignment will be equal to 50. And for the rest of the set elements, it will, equal, it will be equal to zero. The display statement in GAMS is a quick way to write data into the listing file, as we already know. And we can display data, model results, calculations with data or results. If the identifier is a set or a parameter, only the name of that set or the parameter itself is specified, as in this example. They are separated by commas. When displaying model results, uh, we have to use the display command only after the soft statement. 
And if the identifier is a variable or an equation, we also must specify the, uh, uh, the suffix uh, to the variable or the equation, because as we have already discussed during the tutorial, four values are associated with each variable, the lower bound, the upper bound, the level, and the marginal value. In this case, we want to display the levels of our variables. That's why after the name of the variables, we include the dot L, which is the suffix for the level values. We can also use the option statement uh, to control the layout of the data in the listing file when displaying it. This is especially uh, very helpful during, uh, when displaying multidimensional tables, for example. To do so, we can use the option statement, which is a GAMS keyword, then the parameter name, then a column. We can define the number of decimals we want to display column. We can define the number of um, or dimensions or row dimensions and after a column or the number of the column di dimensions. In this case, for example, we, or we want our results parameter to be displayed with one decimal point uh, and uh, have one dimensional rows and one dimensional columns. The option statement can also be used to select various global system parameters to control, among other things, output details, the solution process, and the layout of displays. GAMS provides default values for global system parameters that are uh, enough for the most purposes. However, those can also be adjusted using the option statement. For example, in this case, using the option statement, we define uh, the decimal points for our um, uh, for our model. In this case, we define only one decimal point. There are three ways to include comments in GAMS. The first method, as we already know, is using the stars. And this star should always be included in the very first position of the row. And when you have uh, such a star, this line will be ignored and will be considered as a comment. As in this example, as we can see, if the star is on the first position, it is considered as a comment. However, if it is not in the first position, this will not be considered as a comment. The second option of uh, including comments is the dollar operator, dollar sign on text, dollar sign of text, the limiters. So if you have a large blo block of code that you want to comment out or you have a large text in your code and you don't want to put stars or, uh, in the beginning of each line, you can simply comment out the whole block using the dollar sign on text in the beginning of the of that block and end the comment section with the dollar sign of text as in this example. Comments can also be included at the end of the GAMS code uh, or in the, in the middle of GAMS code. However, these require two steps, activation and specification. Let's first look at the, at the case when we include GAMS code, uh, when, we, when we include comments at the end of the GAMS code. First, this requires an activation. Uh, or because uh, although GAMS uh, facilitates such features, it must be told to do so. This is done using the dollar sign on EOL com statement, which stands for on end of line comments. Uh, yeah. The end of line comments uh, can be included using double exclamation marks before the comment. However, if you don't like this string uh, for including the uh, end of line comments, you can also modify these characters using the dollar sign EOL com statement and defining the preferred, uh, your prefer, uh, the preferred character 
for end of line comments. In this case, we include this character, and after this, we can define end uh, of line comment using the respective characters. Also, in between line comments or uh, can be included using again uh, the activation statement, which is dollar sign on in line, and um, and that uh, this uh, um, inline comment can be initialized using forward slash star a comment star forward slash uh, option. However, again, these characters or these delimiters can uh, be modified using the dollar sign inline cone uh, statement and defining the opening and closing characters for the inline comments. In this case, we define these characters. A gum set element has several numbers attached to it. And these values are called attributes. The, the, these attributes may be uh, assessed, uh, accessed uh, with the written assignment statement. And the, syn the syntax for doing so is as follows. The, the name of the set, uh, uh, set dot and the name of the attribute. So we have the following attributes. And let's look at an example and understand what each of these attributes does. So we have this set with the following set elements. And we define a parameter, two-dimensional parameter, p underscore one, and assign uh, each row and assign each row of this uh, uh, table to uh, one of the uh, one of the set attributes to see what they do. So first is the old attribute, which gives the position of the element in the current set. So for the first element, it is the it is one for the second two and so on. The pose uh, attribute is similar to the old attribute which basically also gives the uh, element position without requiring that the sets uh, are, must be ordered. So again, for the first set element, it is one, for the second, it is two, and so on. The off attribute you know, gives the, uh, gives the uh, position of the current set minus one. So for the first set element, it is zero, for the second, it is one, and so on. The UEL attribute gives the element position in the unique element list. The VAL uh, uh, converts the, set element, uh, the set, uh, set element names that happen to be numbers into values. And the LEN uh, gives the length of the text for the set element name. That is the number of characters used in the set element name. During the tutorial, we have already covered the summation and product statements. Here are some more statements. Uh, we will not uh, discuss those in detail, but it is good to at least know them to be able to read the code. So in this case, for example, we also have the, uh, the square statement, the square root statement, the logarithm, the absolute values, the minimum and maximum values. In GAMS, you can also generate numbers from certain continuous and discrete dis uh, distributions using the following statements. So for example, if you want to generate random values from a normal distribution, it can be done using the statement, GAM statement normal, and in parentheses, uh, the assigning the mean value and the standard deviation of the distribution. Similarly, we can, draw uh, random values from a uniform distribution with the minimum maximum values. And we can also draw integer random value numbers from a uniform distribution using the following GAM statement with the minimum and maximum values. Let's look at some examples. So here we have a set N for our number random uh, draws. In this case, we want to draw 40 random numbers from two distributions. 
And we define parameters for the, the mean value, not the normal distribution, the sigma. We define a p underscore normal parameter, which will represent our normal draws, uh, our random draws from the normal distribution. The low and high parameters, which define the minimum value of our uniform distribution and the maximum value. And the p underscore uniform, which are will be, uh, which stands for our random draws from the uniform distribution. Of course, uh, for, for defining uh, this uh, normal, this, uh, for defining the distributions, you don't need uh, to, uh, to define a uh, to define uh, the mean values or the, the standard variation or the minimum and maximum values in advance as parameter, uh, parameters. As, but you can uh, directly assign them in the statement. Okay, let's move to control variables. Control variables are special variables that are substituted with their values at compile time. They are declared, they are not declared and defined with regular declaration statements like uh, sets or parameters, but they are defined with a dollar control option. There are several control variable types. The first one is the dollar sign set global, which defines a global control variable. And this global control variable is available throughout the code in the input file where they are defined and in all parent files and in all include files. The global uh, variable, the global uh, control variable can be destroyed using the dollar sign drop global statement with the variable. So the syntax is as follows. To define a global variable, we use a dollar sign set global statement. We assign a name to our global variable and assign a value next to it without any equal signs. And we drop it using the drop dollar sign drop global and the variable name. Similar to the global control variables, we can also uh, define local control variables, which are accessible only in the code module where they are defined. And the definition uh, is very similar to the global control variables. And we can drop these local variables using the dollar sign drop local statement. For example, we can define a global control variable called number in this case and assign a value to it. In this case, we assign 10. Then we define sets with set elements from one to the number to the value assigned to the set global. And for the B, we assign the value from five to the uh, value assigned to the set global. As you can see, control variables are always used inside percentage signs. So it means that here the uh, set elements of A range from one to 10 and the set elements of B range from five to 10. In this case, if we want to change this, the number of this global set variable, we just simply assign a new value here and the range of the set elements will be changed automatically. We can also use a, the low, uh, uh, use a set global to do uh, pro, uh, some parameter definitions. In this case, we define a, glo a set global uh, for, uh, called simc for soft width. And then we assign uh, some values to, to the parameter or for yield growth. And for all uh, activities, we assign the yield growth to be equal to 0 0.05. However, for the value uh, for, uh, for the uh, activity uh, defined by the global variable, we want the uh, yield curve to be equal to 0 0.10. In this case, this is the case for soft rate. Control variables can also be used to indicate the relative path to, uh, as in this example, for example, uh, uh, presented below. 
So uh, using the global control variables, we can we, uh, we can define the paths to data directory, to results directory, and scenario directory, and use the control variables for our, for our the code instead of including all these directories every time. Okay, conditional compilation. <laughs> the dollar sign include feature is a GAMS option that inserts uh, cont uh, contents of a specified text file at the location of the code. For example, if the include file for which we want to include some, uh, some GAMS code is located in the current directory after the dollar sign include statement, we simply include the name of the include file. However, if it is in a different directory, we also need to specify the uh, relative path to that file. The dollar sign patch include file is similar to the dollar sign include file and inserts uh, in an input file the content of an external file. However, it also passes on arguments. The syntax is as follows. And so after the page include statement, we include the name of the file. Again, if it is not in the, in the directory, you need to specify the path. Uh, and we include the arguments that are passed to the, uh, to the page include file. Uh, these arguments are treated as character strings that are substituted by numbers inside the include file. Another way of imposing conditionals involves use of the if statement, which also involves the else and else if statements. The syntax is as follows. For example, we can make conditional assignments using the if statement, which is a GAMS keyword, as you can see. Open the parentheses, include a logical condition, and after the comma, include the statement that should be executed if the logical condition is true. The optional else part, as in the second example, allows specific uh, for uh, specifications for cases where the if fails, so the logical where the logical condition defined under the if statement is not satisfied. So as in this example, we have the if the logical condition, the statement to be executed if this logical condition is satisfied. Otherwise the statement specified after the else uh, state uh, after the else operator uh, will be executed. The else if part allows an alternative if test if the presented uh, if the presented uh, logical condition under the if statement is failed. For example, we have an if uh, statement with the logical condition and the statement to be executed, and another else if with a, another logical condition and the statement which will be executed if the conditional under the else if is true and the earlier conditional statement under the if is false. We can also use the abort statement uh, with the if statement. The abort statement is a GAM statement that causes an execu execution error and uh, displays the associated text that you define next to it. So in this case, we have a parameter P1, which is equal to minus three. And we define a conditional if statement with the logical condition saying, if P1 is less than zero, and the execute statement to be executed, abort the execution with the following message. And display P1. So if we run this, we'll receive the following execution error with, uh, with, the, uh, with, uh, with the defined message in the code. The if, else, or else if statements can also be used under the loop to, uh, uh, for, uh, to, to make assi assignments. For example, in this case, we assign values to uh, uh, P3 for each set elements of 
a1 so far. It is, uh, we also use the same as GAM statement, which checks if the uh, set elements of two different sets are the same. So in this case, we assign 50 to a1, uh, 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 set element 75 to a2, and 100 to a3. GAMS also offers several dollar control options that facilitate conditional compilation. The dollar control statement begins with the dollar sign if or ify. And the difference between those is that the dollar sign if is case sensitive and the dollar sign if is not case sensitive. In this case, for example, the syntax is uh, the syntax for this statement is as follows: dollar sign if the conditional expression and the statement to be executed. The conditional, uh, however, is evaluated at the compile time. So uh, it does not involve any GAMS calculated numbers. For example, uh, in this case, we also use the operators node and the operators defined and declared to test whether the items A, B, and P1 have been defined or declared. If they are, uh, they are not defined or declared, the message specified next to them will be displayed. So in this case, for example, B is not uh, declared. Therefore, when we solve this, we'll receive the following message. We can also use the if and if statements with the word statement. In this example, for, uh, now we define a condition to abort the model compilation if the data is missing. In this case, the data is stored in the base underscore data GDX file. Here, we also include two system attributes that are .fn and .incline. Here, the system is a GAMS keyword and the uh, dot .fn and dot .incline are suffixes, as you already understood, and dot .fn identifies the file name of the input file, and the incline uh, identifies the line number where we have this uh, include statement. So for example, if you run this and the data file is missing, we will receive the following uh, the following message, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the following error message with the board statement saying that this file is missing in, in the following GAPS file uh, in, uh, on line seven. The if then and if then if variants of the if statements control whether a block of statements will be uh, processed or not. The option if then must uh, be matched with the option uh, dollar sign and if that marks the end of the block. So far, we have discussed only the GAMS options controlling the output details, but Besides the options controlling the output files, there are also options controlling the solver. For example, using the uh, GAMS attrib attributes, we can also control the iteration limits or the time for, uh, for the solver. Also, we can, as we already know, uh, control the number of columns uh, displayed for each block of variables, the number of rows displayed for each block of equations, and so on. These model attributes can be used either with the option statement as above, or they can uh, be used as suffixes with the model name. Here the mode is the model name defined with your model statement, then, dot, uh, then include the suffix for which you want to make a, a specific statement. And the last part, is the save and restart part. So this feature allows for running the model in pieces. And the intermediate work is saved at the end of each run. For example, for example this feature is uh, very useful for separating the model and the data, 
or allowing for running the model in pieces if the model is very long. And this is also helpful during the model development. Or it can be helpful when running multiple scenarios. This can also save time when writing scenarios and managing the results. For example, imagine we have a GAMS model, which we want to divide into three different GAMS files and save them under the, these files. So imagine that until the source statement, uh, the code until the source statement is saved under the PIS1 GMS file, the source statement is saved under the PIS2 GMS file and the uh, display option is solved under the PIS3 uh, GMS file. So in this case, we can run the PIS1 uh, GMS file and save the, uh, the output in the uh, file called save one using this S equal, which stands for save. Then we can run the second part, that is the solve part, by restarting whatever has been saved under the save one and saving the results of this uh, solve state, uh, solve statement under the S, uh, under the save two. File. And finally, we can run the display statement uh, run, uh, running only the first uh, piece and restarting whatever has been saved under the save to file. So uh, for small problems, this doesn't make much difference, but for very large models that take maybe an hour to run, this can be very helpful. This was it. Thank you very much. And I look, I'm looking forward to, for your questions.